Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today we're going to continue our playthrough of Brigandine. So um, in the last episode I managed to take Humber. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to do it but I managed to do it and we got a new knight, a new friend named Clarence which is a level 10 knight. So. We're gonna go ahead and uh, see what we can do this time around. So, uh, as usual, prior to uh, starting to record here, I've rolled my random attack teams. Um, so, let's go ahead and take a look at how the dice fell for us. So, uh, over here, this is going to be our defense team again. So, we're going back down to attack. And up here, we're gonna have Leonis is going to be here, as well as Chantel, of course, and Sophia, which is down. So I'm going to go ahead and give Chantel some monsters. Uh, Baleen is injured, so he's probably gonna get her monsters 160. Yep, that's almost just perfect. So, there you go, buddy. Five. Okay, so they're not all that high level or anything like that, but uh, that's gonna have to do for now. All right, and Asmit is going down, so we're gonna move him. So Asmit is going to be part of my attack team, and he's gonna be with Paternus and Isfas. So that's a pretty good trio of knights to have. Uh, Isfas is finally available; he's not injured for once, uh, but he doesn't have any monsters. So I'm gonna need to summon him an army. So let's go ahead and send Asmit over there. Uh, we're gonna send. Clarence, Cortina, and Jorg on quest. We're gonna select to move Isfus. So he's going over here. And then we're gonna move Sophia because she's going to be part of the defense team up here. And Charlene is going on quest. All right, so I should be all good uh, for my troops except for Isfas over here. So he, as you can see, he has absolutely nothing. He does have a lot of room power, so we're gonna be able to give him a little bit of an army as long as I have enough mana to summon a bunch of stuff, which I should have. Yeah, three, thirty-seven hundred. So let's give him a couple griffins. We're gonna give him at least one centaur. At least one djinn. Let's give him another centaur and another gin. I think it's all gonna fit. If not, it's not the end of the world. But I'm pretty sure it will. Alright, so two, two, two. So we cannot have more than six monsters in one unit. Right, so let's see here. Nope, the last gin won't fit. Okay, so I, I over summon. So I'm gonna leave the gin here if I ever, you know, come back into there, it's gonna be there. I know that maybe the smartest thing to do is to just delete it so that it doesn't eat some of my mana per turn. Honestly, I'm really not worried about it. So we're just gonna leave that there. I believe I already told him to move. Yes, I did. 
Alright, so I should all be good here. So I'm gonna make sure that... So Leoness has her army ready. Asmit as is ready. Chantel as is ready. So we're all good. As usual, I'm gonna go ahead and save. I expect Norgard to attack. Maybe not this turn, but I expect for them to... to to it back, to fight back. Alright, gonna execute, making sure I didn't make a mistake. So I should have three here, well, four if you count Baleen, we cannot do anything. I should have three over here as well. Yep. It's right, so looking pretty good here. Uh, so I believe Gring, Gring is my MVP from the last attack I made that turned everybody to stone. So he's the real MVP. All right, so pretty good. I'm I'm pretty confident with that over there. Uh, obviously, I can't attack now because two of the three just moved, so I have to skip a turn. Carolean is invading Iscalio, and Iscalio had to retreat. Iscalio's in trouble. Oh, especially if they lose that one too. And they did. Yeah. Iscalio might be the first country to disappear. Alright, I have people coming back from quests. So, kill off quest. As Kidoff gets hungry, he catches a rabbit for supper. Amazingly, the rabbit begins to speak. Gentle knight, I am but a small rabbit, barely skin and bones, because I give all my food to my children and pregnant wife. So, yeah, we've seen that quest before. There's a few different outcomes, so I'm gonna go through it. Their only joy is hope that I return home. Please, good knight, do not heat me. I will even give you my secret treasure. Filled with curiosity, Kilaf asks what the treasure is. I will tell you, if only you swear to spare my life. Though his stomach grumbles considerably at the decision, curiosity wins and Kilaf sets the rabbit free. Thank you, kind knight. My treasure isn't that old. You surely deserve it. As the rabbit said, Kilaf sees the treasure hole nearby. Farewell. The rabbit ups uh, away as the knight eagerly reaches inside the hole. Kila feels something. It is a pirate earring. Arr! Kila takes a pirate earring. And we're gonna equip it to. not sure who yet. Philo Quest. A roving tinker is walking down the same road as Philo. We've seen that as well. The two share a cheery conversation until their paths need to part. Sad, we each much we each must travel our road, but I've enjoyed your company. Here is a gift to remember me. The Tinker hands a flame amulet to Philo. Philo. I was going to sell it, but I've enjoyed our time more than gold. Take care, my friend. Philo shakes the Tinker's hand and they go their separate ways. Philo takes the flame amulet. Right, so I'm not getting like crazy good items, but it's items regardless. So, and at the start of the game, most of your knights don't have any items equipped, so any little boost can help. Uh, Galloin quest. Exhausted from his journey, Galloin visits the local tavern. A drunk swaggers up. So we've seen that as well. It's another one that has a few different outcomes. You're one of them rude knights, aren't you? Galwin gives a reluctant nod. I knew it! One of your kind spared my life once! So that's the outcome we haven't seen yet. You're all a swell bunch! Hoop. Hey everyone, tonight's on me! Galwin enjoys the hospitality. The next morning, the drunk is passed out on the tavern floor. Galwin doubts the man will remember his t this tomorrow. Alright, so whenever whenever you get the happy drunk, you don't get anything. You only get something when you get the the mad drunk. 
All right, Clarence Quest. So just uh, joined us and coming back from Quest already. As Clarence enters a village, the elder approaches and fervently pled, pleads for help. So we've seen that. Uh, that's how we got that Gigantes. So let's see if we can get another good monster here. A ferocious holy griffin has settled in the forest near our village. Please, noble knight, save us from this beast. Bravely, Clarence heads into the forest, determined to tame this fiendish holy griffin. The forest is dark and eerily silent. Suddenly, Clarence senses something behind. It is the frightful holy griffin. If I move, it will attack. I must break its will. The holy griffin's crazed eyes pierce directly into Clarence, and Clarence's eyes glare defiantly back. Time passes in silence, and neither move a, and neither move a hair through the night. All right, I think we're getting him. As the sun begins to rise, the holy griffin twitches, and with a whimper of defeat, it bows in submission. Clarence has saved the village and dominated the deadly holy griffin. Wow, that's. In my experience, you, you you more often than not don't get the monster with those scenarios, and now we're two for two. That's pretty cool. So we got ourselves a free Holly Griffin, um, so that's pretty cool. Yorg quest. In an in an ancient ruin, Yorg finds a stone face carved into a wall. Words are carved beneath it. If thou wish a blessing, receive it from my mouth. Indeed, the face's mouth is an arm-sized hole. Eorg slowly reaches inside. The hole is deep. Eorg sinks his arm in up to the shoulder. Suddenly, Eorg feels something. But as Eorg pulls on the item, the mouth snaps closed. Eorg is trapped. Ugh, I can't move! In a panic, Eorg drops the item and the mouth opens. Is this a cruel joke? Eorg tries to remove the item again and again with the same outcome. Disappointed, Eorg gives up and heads home. So this is another one where there is a couple different outcomes. Obviously, one of the outcome you get the item, and then in this case, you don't get the item. At least you don't get injured, so it's just a, a quest where nothing happens, really. Raisin quest. Raisin wanders lost in a forest. Ready to collapse from exhaustion, he finds a strange fountain. The cool water quenches his thirst. Raisin collapses in pain and blacks out. Raisin slowly opens his eyes. His body feels different. The fountain has unlocked a hidden potential. Raisin is more agile. Agility plus four, which is awesome. That's a really good outcome. Uh, Raisin can be a front attacker and definitely the plus four to agility helps uh, to avoid attacks so and raises his defense slightly langborg's quest as he walks along the road langborg sees a swan with an injured wing feeling compassionate langborg spends the night treating the injured creature in the morning, the swan is much better, and taking to the sky, it circles once before flying away. Several days later, as Langborg is camping in a canyon, he hears the swan's call. Leaving his tent, Langborg sees the swan landing nearby, but as he approaches, it flies a small jump away. Several times, he walks to the swan, but it stays just beyond his reach. It seems to be teasing Langborg. Annoyed, Langborg turns to go back to camp. Suddenly, a huge rock tumbles down the canyon wall and crashes into the tent where Langborg was resting. As the dust settles, Langborg shudders to think what almost happened. Grateful, Langborg looks for the swan, but it has already taken flight and disappeared into the vast sky. Alright, so that's another one with a few different outcomes. So, in this case, Langborg's life was spared, which... Well... Is good, I guess. It is Langborg after all. All right, so got a few items. They're nothing too crazy, though. 
So if I manage to win the attack, it's gonna be the first time in this playthrough that we're gonna have to defend three castles, so... it That's why I don't consider Leonia... To, a lot of people consider Leonia to be one of the hardest country to start with because your knights start so low in level and everything, but one great advantage that Leonia has over everybody else is that they only have two castles to protect at the start, and that makes it pretty easy to kind of just bunch up in there so anyway now oh, let's see here all right so the pirate earring uh, gives uh, blue resist plus two and two defense and the flame amulet only gives plus one red resist so kill off already has that that's better Leoness has something increasing her intelligence, she's gonna keep that. Philo has the dark robe, it's better. Sophia's keeping that. Baleen is keeping that. Alright, Galloway doesn't have anything, so here. You're getting that, buddy. And there you go. For now, that's gonna do. Eventually, you kind of get better items that uh, are more specific to a class, per se. So, but uh, we'll take it. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Yeah, we've got our friend uh, Gribron here. I'm gonna give it to. Let's see. I'm gonna give it to Clarence for now, he's the one who tamed it, so it makes sense to give it to him now. Eventually, I mean, I might move the... I might move the monster, but... Well, I don't need to right now. My armies that need to have monsters have monsters. So now we're gonna send everybody on quest that's not defending here, so that's Killa, Philo, Baleen, Gelloin, Clarence, Yorg, Raisin, and Langbor. Wow, that's a lot of people. Almost everybody's back, huh? So, we're gonna save again. Just in case I made a mistake, which I don't think I made. I'm totally expecting Norgard to attack me this turn. Alright, so now it's our attack, so I have a lot of choices, I can attack in four different places. So let's take a look and see where we're going to attack. So over here, lots of golems and ghouls, but also lots of really good knights. Dry, Styria, Bagdamagus, they're all pretty strong. Over here, we have Marriott with Dynadon and Milia, pretty good. Here we have Kai with Shootless, Sierra, and Bill Cut. Then finally, we have Ear. Looks like that's my, that might be where I attack. So we have Camden, Miguel, and Victoria. Yep, I think that's where I have the best chance of winning, so I'm going to attack Brussolyand. Oh, Iskalio is invading over there. <laughs> Ooh, that's gonna hurt. They really couldn't afford to lose monsters, they probably lost some monsters in that fight. And now I'm invading. Alright, so I don't think we've seen Victoria or Miguel, so we're gonna take a look at them. Look at those flowers. I wonder if they would grow like that in my garden. I'll stab you, but you don't stab back, okay? Camden is kind of a oddball. I kind of like him because of that. Alright, so let's look at uh, Victoria. So. 
uh, among people who have played Brigandine a lot and everything, sometimes Victoria's name uh, comes up as one of the weakest knight because her room power is so low, she's at 144 at level 11, but uh, Victoria is actually a pretty competent mage, so she kind of makes up for, uh, for it that way. A beautiful caster known for her bad char character and worse perfume, she only likes authority when she has it and is quite vain, often sitting and admiring herself in a mirror. However, she is still popular due to her looks. So... Yeah, she's a vixen, so... Um, like enchantresses, like Cortsina, when they hit level 10, they have a couple different classes they can pick. One of them is Vixen. Uh, they're pretty strong casters, they're pretty good. Then Miguel is a level 10 knight, we have a couple of those already, so we know pretty much what, I, what it's all about. Uh, he's definitely a little bit better than Langborg. Uh, I'd say he's more in line with, like, Clarence. Um, so let's see. So, eldest son of the Rand family. He is serious and responsible. When the war began, the three siblings reluctantly joined opposing kingdoms so the family name would survive regardless of the victor. He stayed in their homeland, Iscalio. So, there's kind of a storyline with... Uh, three different knights that are in three different countries that are all siblings and whenever you whenever one of the kingdoms fall where one of the sibling is as uh, they end up joining the same country so uh, Leonia doesn't have one of the siblings so I'm not I'm probably not gonna be getting any of them but uh, new Almikia has one and is Garrus as the other one, so um, so they usually, if they win, and or like if, for example, if Iscalio gets eradicated, then Miguel might join New Almakia to be with his sister. That's over there. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start this attack. Alright, so Isfas has a lot of units uh, with decent mobility, although Centaurs are not very good to walk in forest. Which I guess, in a sense, it kind of makes sense, in a way, because, I mean, they're kind of horses. I mean, Centaurs are half horses, half human, and you don't expect a horse to be able to, you know, gallop all that great into forests and everything, but uh, in a lot of different myths and story-wise, centaurs actually live in forests, so kind of weird, but it kind of makes, makes sense too, I guess. Alright, so Paternus has a couple of monsters that are getting close to level 10. So we still haven't promoted anything or anyone. That's going to happen eventually. But we've been lucky and got some free promoted monsters, so I mean we can't complain too much. That's weird. Why is it charging me? It's as if the difficulty got 
got changed. <laughs> the computer typically don't charge you, char like, towards you when you attack, when you're playing on the hardest difficulty. That's odd. That's probably gonna make it a lot easier too. And he's staying behind with... I... That's... That's very interesting. I... I don't remember seeing that. And I've played this game a lot. Well, that's what happens. I mean, I can totally come and... I totally can, but I won't. Once I go through... through that unit... They're probably gonna be retreating. Interesting twist. Very interesting. I guess this game still has a few surprises in store for me. Let's see what happens. Alright, I left Paternus open for a reason. And that's because he's a pretty decent attacker. He's so high level. Wow, okay. Kim, then you disappoint me. Come on, buddy. Evade that. There you go. Uh, unicorns or Pegasus or Nightmare never get really strong at all, so don't ever expect for them to be able to dish out the damage. They're really more uh, like a support unit. Nice little level for our Phoenix here. Oh, that hurt. They also don't have great defense as evidence right there. The MVP didn't uh, turn it, the, that plant to stone, I guess. I mean, he can't do it every single time. Right, she's probably coming now. No. Wow. The computer is really playing weird. That's gonna be his downfall. Oh, please don't kill my rock with your ghoul. And my phoenix uh, almost completely healed. Now I have Paternus and I have Hollyward and I'm totally using it. So dealt some damage here. Alright, you are coming here. You're gonna do air storm down here to help our little Pegasus there that's 
having two monsters on it. Uh, what do I want to kill? Uh, green on green is not going to be great. Let's see. 98. 100. Alright. I'll take 100. Alright. I'm going to attack with my golem. 100%. And I cannot be paralyzed because golems, that's... Almost their only quality is they cannot be affected by status effects. There you go. What to do? I don't really have anybody that absolutely needs a eel. I'm honestly, I'm just gonna wait here. I want to attack because with the counter attack, I might get a little low on HP. I don't want for it to die, so I'm just gonna wait here. Isphus. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and come and attack this. Alright, so monks have that kick uh, as their normal attack, and when it lands, it uh, it pushes off the monster, so you never get a counter attack when that happens. It's pretty useful. Uh, keep in mind if there's a monster in the line behind the monster. Uh, if there's another unit there, then the knockback doesn't happen, but you still don't get a counter-attack. The only time that a monk gets counter-attacked is if he misses. Alright, I can't make it to where I could attack that, so we're gonna come here. And even though it's not gonna be great damage because they're both green, that's all I can attack, so there you go. Now I can try and come here with my griffin and finish it. 72%, not great. But great enough. Got a dark emblem, that's why it hit so hard on my Pegasus. I was wondering, it was like a level 1, I was a little confused by that. Alright, our griffin is now level 3. Come and attack the giant ear. Obviously, we're not gonna kill it, but I have a 100% chance to it. And a crit. Ow. Okay, so he dazed me, so next attack on that griffin will land, and there's no counter attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, let's see if I can kill this plant with Rotar. Sure thing. Bye bye. Alright, decent level. Better level. I'm gonna save. Uh, I'm gonna save this gym just in case. I wonder if Esmet can kill the ghoul. Probably. Yep. I'll come all the way over here and attack the giant. Oh, almost. Ah. 
I think there's a pretty good chance that the computer is gonna be retreating after this. Alright, so Rugzilla is going to probably gain at least a level. So, eh, I would have liked a little bit of agility there. Rocks are not the most agile. Oh, they have to withdraw, they don't have anywhere to run, so there's a, a better chance for me to capture monsters. Come on, Green. You the MVP, buddy. You can take it. You've seen worse. Ah, poison. Stone. Not that it matters, but. Alright, better chance to capture monsters, and I didn't capture any. So, alright, we managed to take over the that castle. It wasn't very challenging. I have no idea, no idea why Camden charged that we did. Alright, this one just do this one. Nice. Pretty good. Rotar is turning out to be a better centaur than uh, the other one. There you go. The MVP got some agility. Ooh. There was only Ulster there. So Iscalio is almost gone. <laughs> Alright, kill off. So at the start of the playthrough, I killed their strong monsters and it really hurt them. They haven't really recovered from that. Alright, kill off quest. Kill off stands at the entrance to a long forgotten ruin. Curious, he goes inside. Walking through many weathered, collapsing passages, kill off comes to a gravestone surrounded by a beautiful flower garden. The inscription is too worn to read, but a death bringer is placed on the grave. Well, with a name like that, that sounds like a pretty kick-ass weapon. It must have belonged to the person buried here. Killoff carefully removes the death bringer. Killoff takes the death bringer. All right, so we didn't get the chill where we have to wait a month. Killoff bows his head in respect, praying that his need for the death bringer be understood. Killoff leaves the ruins and heads home. Sharding quests. Sharding meets a gnome in the forest who says hi as if they were old friends. As if they are old friends. You like eat? It's free! The gnome holds out a bright red mushroom. Charlene eyes it suspiciously. What wrong? Is Big Strong Knight afraid of Tiny Mushroom? The gnome stares with a mocking smirk till the knight's ego demands action. Charlene trusts her luck to God and swallows the mushroom down. Tastes odd, but not bad. Well, the best one is good, yes? See you! The gnome disappears into the forest. A while later, Charlene begins to hear voices. Uh oh. Something has been wrong with my throat, I just can't sing well. Take care of yourself, it would be a shame if you couldn't sing. Charlene looks around but sees no one. Look, a knight, shall we say hello? What's the point? Humans never understand us. So true. Charlene looks around again, only two birds singing in a three. Charlene can understand them. Is this because of the gnome's mushroom? Did you notice the thief hiding his loot again? 
Again, did he use a hollow three? Of course, just like always. I can't believe no one finds a stash. Excitedly, excitedly, Charlene searches through the forest and finally spots a large hollow tree. Inside, she finds a bastard sword and a bag of gold. Amazed, Charlene rushes back to the birds, hoping to hear more secrets. This time, all Charlene hears is singing. Sadly, the mushroom seems to have worn off. Charlene takes the bastard sword. Cortina quest. Exhausted from her journey, Cortina visits the local tavern. A drunk swaggers up. So we've seen that that quest a few times now. So I'm not gonna read through it because we've seen it several times. Not by now. All right. So we're gonna skip and see what item we get. As we know, the the drunk gets his ass kicked or groin kicked rather. And then we get an item at the end. Uh, Clayom Slice at Cortina. Alright, so... That's a sword. And I usually give it to Langborg because it has a plus 20 MP, I think. And he really can use it so that he can cast Eel more than once at his level. So, we'll see. Well, Langborg is not here, so I can't really... Right, only three people came back from quests. Let's just take a look. I don't think I can equip the bastard sword to anybody. Ooh. So that sword is pretty cool, plus 22 attack is awesome, but that minus 10 to it is not as good. Right, I'm gonna give this unpronounceable name of a wyvern uh, the Dark Emblem. It can only be equipped on monsters, so it's gonna give it plus 6 attack and uh, give it dark or black element. So I got a bunch of swords and I have the country that has the least sword users. <laughs> so so right now I can't really equip it or equip any of them because my couple knights that I have are out on quest. Oh, there's a rock here that uh, that Iscalio wasn't using, so I will, before we call it a video, I'm going to move things around. Oh wait, one of them is, yeah, that one is stronger than that one. Alright. Alright, so this first uh, unit changed quite a bit. I I do like rocks a lot, so definitely gonna use that over an extra centaur and gin. Gins are useful; they can be cool, but a rock is uh, is better. So this giant is about to the, to be level ten. So we're about to be able to promote some monsters. I'm gonna go ahead and save this here, and as usual, uh, guys, thank you for tuning in, and until I roll this game next time, see ya!